Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how to go from Lightroom into HDR Expose and then I'm also going to show you how to take the the BEF 32-bit HDR file that you make in Expose and also bring it into Photoshop using Unified Colors 32 Float. So we're going to start as you can see, I have a whole lot of different brackets and exposures and whatnot going on in my Lightroom, but um, I'm going to use a set of brackets I took from the Mark Twain house. And I really love this shot. Um, it really shows off the, uh, the, the beauty of the architecture of the Mark Twain house. So we're going to select, we'll do these five brackets right here, and we're going to go to File, and we're going to Export and in the export we're going to choose merge and edit in HDR expose alright so we're going to choose that we're going to do the originals because I have not done any Lightroom adjustments we're going to use the default white balance natural uh, ghosting because it's on a tripod there was no one in the photo so we're going to do that um, aligned sources again on a tripod I don't need it you could do that it takes a little longer to uh, process otherwise but we're going to hit export and you're going to see HDR Expose will just open. So I'm going to pause this while that merges to the standard HDR and we'll be back. Okay, so here we go. The photo has loaded in HDR Expose. You can see uh, it looks okay. It's not perfect. Um, it's very natural, however. Uh, HDR Expose is very good at creating the, the base, your baseline, very natural. So, um, Sometimes when I load my HDR uh, in Expose for the first time, I like to use this tool over here, which uh, it's dynamic range mapping, and it, it sort of generates what they feel as the best HDR um, tone mapping for your photo. So just to sh give you an idea, uh, I'm going to select, it wants a mid-range tone. Uh, I I like to play with it. Sometimes I'll grab just a, a gray just to see what happens. But um, as you can see, it's starting to compile the tone mapping. And it's going to change. It's, we'll see if we like it or not. And you can always adjust from there. You can reset and start at the beginning. But we're going to do this just for testing purposes. So there we go. It made it a little more contrasty, a little unrealistic. There's a little bit of halo going on. Um, but it's not terrible. So let's say um, you want to undo that. You can. Um, you can just trash the automatic. We can do it again if we wanted to, just just for for uh, just for the hell of it. And we'll choose that range over there. Um, so again. I'm doing this just to, just to give you an idea of HDR Exposed, but I'm not going to go through the full processing uh, at this point in time. Uh, but let's see how this it produces. It's actually even more contrasty from from when I grabbed it from the brick. But let's say we like that. So now we're going to go in and actually brighten that up just a bit. Oop, that went the wrong way. We want to go that way. A little more. All right. So there's we're at the brightness we like. We want to bring down some of the highlights. Some of the shadows. All right. We're getting more detail back into the brick over here. So one of the cool tools that Unified Color put into their HDR Expose is their Reduce Halo artifact. So let's see how well it does over here by the brick in the window. I'm going to put it on moderate just to see. And it does take a little bit of time. And you can see it did take away a little bit of it. Now let's do high and see how well that, that does. All 
Uh, I do want to point out HDR Expose did not incorporate any ghosting features really beyond the original merge. They did not incorporate any ghosting features uh, into their software here at least. Um, they are most likely working on something I would assume but there's no way to know for sure. Uh, so it did remove a little bit. You can still see it up here but the bricks look much better. So anyway, so let's say we're happy with this. Um, really, I would not be happy with this, but let's say we are. So we're going to hit save. And when you hit save, it gives you the options of JPEG and TIFF. It also gives you the option to name and then to save the BEF file. The BEF file is Unified Colors HDR file. So we're going to save it with the BEF, copy of the image, as a TIFF. Hit OK. It's going to save the image and bring it back into Lightroom. Now, you may be thinking, well, Lightroom won't handle the BEF file. You're right, it won't. So now, as you'll see, it just popped up here with the TIFF that we just created in the mix with the brackets. Um, now, where is that BEF? Well, let's say we click on this TIFF and we right click and go down to Show in Finder. So you see here that when you show in Finder, you have the TIFF file that you just created, and right next to it is the BEF file. If we double-click this BEF file, it's going to reload your uh, layered or uh, HDR file with its recipe or its preset and how, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not going to be merged down to a, a, a one-layer file like a like the TIFF or a JPEG or anything like that. So. What we want to do is actually open it in Photoshop. So in order to open it in Photoshop, the easiest thing to do, of course, and um, this is for most of the things on a Mac, um, I think this will work the same way in a PC. I don't have a PC to test this, but you, we are just going to drag the BEF file into Photoshop. Now, you have to have 32 float installed in order for the file to open. but uh, because Photoshop will not handle 32-bit HDR file natively. So here we go, here's the BEF file, 32 bits inside of Photoshop, which is pretty intense. But we're going to go to Filter, and Unified Color, 32 Float. Inside of Photoshop now, I can do more, photo, uh, more HDR adjustments similar to HDR Expose. I can add more um, tone mapping to the photo inside of Photoshop, instead of me going back and forth and back and forth, I can do it all in one place. So that is a pretty neat thing to do. Uh, and thanks to Unified Color, it's done. Now, my one, the, the, the downside to this is it's only going to work with the BEF files. So if you do your tone mapping in um, Photomatics or HDR Darkroom or any of the other HDR software is out there, it will only handle unified colors. Of course, they're not going to make it so that it'll handle everyone's. Um, they want you to buy their software. So, um, if you are using unified colors, HDR Expose, or if you were using Photo Studio, uh, which became HDR Expose, then I highly recommend you trying 32 Float. They have a free trial. I'll even include it down here um, in my blog post. Um, so, give it a try, see if you like it, and um, happy HDR shooting.